The number of out-of-school children in Nigeria stands at 13.2 million, and that's according to the Demographic Health Survey conducted in 2015 by the United Nations Children's Fund, one of the highest in the world. 60% of the figure are girls, which are mostly in the northern part of the country. This week on Dateline Abuja, we'll look at how the situation can be addressed. Hello there, welcome to Dateline Abuja, I'm Gloria Umizuki. The Zuba fruit market here in the nation's capital provides an opportunity for farmers and traders from different parts of the country to carry out their businesses. The market also attracts some attention from some ECOWAS uh, countries. However, the market is in poor state, begging for attention. We'll bring you a report on the state of the market and we'll also have a conversation on keeping girls in school with the country representative of the United Nations Populations Fund. But first, what are the stories that made headlines within the week in the nation's capital? The Code of Conduct Tribunal has ordered that the six counts charge bordering on alleged non-declaration of assets filed by the federal government against the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Odmoga, should be served on him personally. At the court's proceedings, a three-man panel of the tribunal headed by the chairman, Mr. Danladi Umar, directed that the Chief Justice of Nigeria be served personally and adjourned the case to Tuesday, the 22nd of January, for arraignment and hearing of the preliminary objection. Meanwhile, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, is absolving President Muhammad Buhari of any involvement in the prosecution of the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Walter Onogen. Professor Shibaju says the president only learned about the trial on Saturday evening and has always made clear his stance that institutions should not be interfered with. Let me say that straight away that the first, uh, the first thing is that perhaps unlike any other government, uh, the uh, President Muhammad Buhari, his whole approach is that institutions should just do their work. I can tell you for, for a fact that he did not even know about this until, sun, until Saturday evening. He did not even know that there was going to be any kind of arrangement until Saturday evening. He has said categorically, don't interfere with whatever the institutions are doing. Don't interfere. Sometimes it has consequences such as we have today. In the case of the Code of Conduct Bureau, the man was a new, the chairman of the Code of Conduct, or not the Code of Conduct Tribunal, but the Bureau, where uh, these things are reported to. He's completely new. He's barely three weeks, I think he's about a month at the job. But the specific instruction to him is, if you receive a petition, whatever it is, go through the process. President Muhammad Buhari led other dignitaries to lay wreath at the National Arcade to mark the 2019 Armed Forces Remembrance Day. The day is set aside to honor military personnel who died in defense of the nation. The Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshibaju, the Senate President, Speaker of the House of Representatives, and the Chief Justice of Nigeria joined to lay wreath in honor of the nation's falling heroes. Prayers were said for the repose of souls of the falling heroes, as well as gun salute in their honor. There is a new Inspector General of Police. He is Mr. Mohamed Adamu. He was decorated by President Muhammadu Buhari following the retirement of Mr. Ibrahim Idris, who reached the age of 60. I would like to thank Mr. President for uh, considering me worthy to be the next Inspector General of Police. And we know there are challenges, security challenges that we need to tackle in the country. We have uh, issues of kidnapping, we have issues of uh, um, um, abduction, we have some other security challenges, and we are going to re-strategize. From the strategy the former Inspector General put in place, we will re-strategize to make sure that uh, we tackle uh, these challenges. Head action, the, you've heard from the former Inspector General of Police, um, 
adequate arrangement has been made to make sure that um, free and fair and credible election takes place uh, in Nigeria. And uh, we're going to build up on the strategies put in place to also make sure that we have um, his free uh, election in the country. Are you going to allay the fears of the opposition that you are not going to be partisan? Well, we are professionals. We are going to stick by the rules. We are going to do the right thing. Um, we will not go outside the, 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 the actives of our job to do things that are untoward. Everybody will be given level playing ground to play his, his or her politics. President Muhammad Buhari has launched the new security e-passport with 10-year validity period. President Buhari and Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibaju were issued the 10-year diplomatic passport by the Nigeria Immigration Service during an emergency Federal Executive Council meeting. The Comptroller General of the Immigration, Mr. Mohamed Babandidi, set aside the 10-year validity. The new passport has other 25 special features, differentiating it from the existing passports. There are 25 differences between the old and the new passports. Some of them you don't need to know. But those you need to know that are very simple to you. This is the standard password which everybody holds. You can hold this together with any of this. But you can't hold the three passports together. Any Nigerian citizen can hold this if you are naturalized or Nigerian by birth. But an official of government who works for government from the rank of a deputy director at the federal level and a director at the state level can hold this. This is diplomatic passport dedicated for diplomats, but head of government agencies like ministers hold this passport, but some of them hold it for life. Like Mr. President, whoever is president of Nigeria holds diplomatic passport for life. The National Assembly sat for the first time in 2019 when lawmakers resumed from their plenary session. However, the federal lawmakers adjourned in honor of a member of the House of Representatives and former President Shehu Shagari. Both of them passed on while the lawmakers were on recess. Nevertheless, the Senate President, Senator Bukola Saraki, warns his colleagues not to sacrifice legislative work on the altar of personal political aspirations. Although the political season has swung into full gear, it is my hope that we are able to get a bit of rest and some quiet time during the break and that you have all recharged your batteries, ready to dive back into legislative work with renewed vigor. The federal government has signed a $1.1 billion contract with the Brazilian government to enhance mechanized agriculture in the country, which will create 5 million jobs for the youths. Speaking at the launch of the Green Imperative Project, the Vice President, Professor Yemi Oshimbaju, said the implementation of the project will ensure food security and will be driven by the private sector. Of course, the major dividend of all of this are the hundreds of thousands of quality jobs that young men and women will be able to access. But also crucial is the fact that the private sector is an important component of this particular enterprise. The National Economic Council has approved the National Livestock Transformation Plan to address the clashes between farmers and herders in the country. The plan is designed to create a platform for leading agriculture firms to emerge from the livestock sector and transform the livestock ecosystem. The National Livestock Transformation Program is about creating conditions to launch the peaceful transformation of the Nigeria livestock ecosystem, which is expected to add to at least two trillion to add to at least two trillion naira to the Nigerian economy. So the approach is to invest in the livestock sector to uh, provide ranches, mitigating the escalating crisis between pastoralists and farmers and improving broader supporting architecture around these issues. In the SS crude account, as of December 31st, 2018, there's 497 billion, million, sorry, million, 864,626.80 dollars. The Independence National Electoral Commission has released the final list of candidates eligible to participate in the 2019 general election. 
The list contains the names of candidates for the presidential, senatorial, House of Representatives and state assemblies. The presidential candidates list features 144 names comprising parties, presidential candidates and their running mates. There are 28 women on the list as either the candidate or running mate. A total of 72 candidates are expected to run for the presidential election.